Dear Saints of Grace, good morning and welcome to worship on this day, the 15th of November. It is good to be God's people together again this day. I so look forward to the time when we will all be together in this worship space, enjoying the company of one another and certainly also the company of the Holy Spirit as one worshiping body. The day will come. Uh, it's just on us to be patient and to be hopeful and prayerful and also to be diligent in our health practices as a greater community. Welcome to worship. We do have a guest preacher today. Our congregation is part of the Northwest Intermountain Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And we are participating in a preaching project that is titled Color Amazed Preaching Project. And our guest preacher for today is a doctoral candidate from Luther Seminary of St. Paul, Minnesota, and her name is Kelly Sherman Conroy. Kelly is a member of the Ogallala Sioux Tribe, and uh, she is willing to bring her message to us and to the rest of the Synod on this day. So thank you very much, Kelly, for your contribution to the body of Christ, and we are grateful to have you with us in this time of worship. We turn now to our confession and forgiveness, and I pray that you would uh, settle your hearts and your minds and prepare for this very special and sacred time. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We will now sing our gathering hymn, ELW number 710, Let Streams of Living Justice.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Righteous God, our merciful Master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Zephaniah, chapter 1. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full and terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Let us read Psalm 98 together responsively. God, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, turn back, O children of the earth. For a thousand years in your sights are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the nights. You sweep them away like a dream, they fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning, it is green and flourishes. In the evening, it is dried up and withered. For we are consumed by your anger. We are afraid because of your wrath. Our iniquities you have set before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is 70 years, perhaps in strength even 80. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. Now, considering the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman and there will be no escape. But you beloved are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief for you are all children of light and children of the day. 
we are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, For it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them, and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made you five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Now enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you have handed over to me two talents. See, I have made you two more talents. And his master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here, you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have in abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless servant, Throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Greetings, worshipers. My name is Megan Manlove, and I serve as pastor of Trinity Lutheran Church in Nampa, Idaho, about 30 minutes from Boise. I first want to take a minute to thank all those who are working on the Color Amazed Preaching Project. Thank you so much for bringing these preachers to our Synod. It is my privilege to introduce to you our November 15th guest preacher, Kelly Sherman Conroy. I first met Kelly when her family moved to my hometown of Custer in the Black Hills of South Dakota. That was the summer before our junior year in high school. Kelly and I then went on to play basketball together for two seasons, and our families both worshiped at Custer Lutheran Fellowship. Kelly is a proud member of the Ogallala Sioux tribe and is a Native American theologian who has grounded her life in the Holy Spirit and the deep spiritual practices intertwined between Lakota identity and Christian beliefs. She's currently pursuing her PhD 
at Luther Seminary in St. Paul, Minnesota. She also serves as Minister of Social Justice and Advocacy for CYF Ministries at Nativity Lutheran Church in St. Anthony, Minnesota. Welcome, Kelly. It is an honor to speak with you today, especially during Native American Heritage Month. My name is Mato Washte Wenya, Good Bear Woman. My Christian name is Kelly Sherman Conroy, and I am a member of the Oglala Lakota Sioux Tribe in Western South Dakota. I am currently studying for my PhD in Systematic Theology at Luther Seminary, and I continue to be very aware and conscious of my Lakota traditions and of my tribal history. So in honor of this month, I'm going to begin with a little history. You see, I became a spiritual person in terms of my vocation when I was very young. I'd say four or five years old. When I was that age, I lived in a rural area on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation where I'm an enrolled member of the Oglala Sioux Tribe. So enrolled means I can trace my family back to long before colonizers came to this land. I know the names of my ancestors who's resided in the areas where I live in Minnesota, as well as North Dakota, South Dakota, and beyond. So I had a very deep and intense experiences with my native tradition when I grew up as a child. I grew up in a family that spoke the Sioux language, understood the culture, and talked about it at home, and it was really central to our lives. So as a child, I was raised in a very traditional Lakota way. I was not only raised by my parents, I was raised by my elders, my community. As a Lakota, we live based on the concept of interdependence. This means that we lived, we live in kinship societies and extended family groups formed our communities. The extended family are made up of blood and non-blood relatives. And this is at the core of our nuclear family. So now let me take you back a little more to my childhood. My grandparents lived on a ranch in the grasslands of South Dakota on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. They had a wraparound porch that looked onto the corrals and the beautiful grass filled the hills in the distance. Oftentimes the wind would carry through the trees and buildings were dispersed all over the property. And you would hear the horses and the cows and the chickens and the dogs and the birds and the children all in the background. And oftentimes a tractor moving hay or the sound of Lawrence Welk on the radio with my grandmother humming along in the kitchen, preparing coffee and something to eat, usually for our guests. More often than not, elders, my great aunts and uncles, sitting outside on the wraparound porch, enjoying the beauty and telling me stories. If you saw my elders on the street, you might dismiss them as simple, but that would be a mistake. The elders in my family, Mitakiwape, are descendants of Lakota navigators, as I call them, brought up in the old ways by their elders, and now they were passing that knowledge on to me. My great uncle Harvey taught me about the names of the wind, the rain, the birds, and all we would see when we were sitting on the porch. Usually me sitting at his feet while my aunt Agnes would play with my long hair. Speaking between Lakota and English, my uncle liked to close his eyes and he and my aunt and my grandpa, if he was around, or my grandmother, and they would, they would sing in Lakota. And I remember the first time they asked me to join them. So for me as a child, this time with my elders was precious, almost the equivalent to going to Disneyland, almost. Because they wanted to teach me about my destiny. I was learning firsthand centuries of traditions that have carried down through the generations after generations. I would close my eyes and sing my little heart out, not knowing the words, but feeling the spirit, the sacredness of those moments, always pretending as my eyes were closed that I could see my great grandfather and my ancestors, my hunkakes right there with us. However, the more I think about it today, I realize I really wasn't pretending because they really were there with me. My grandparents and the elders in my family made sure that as a child growing up, I would not forget the stories of my family and of my people. 
how my great grandfather fought for us in the Battle of Greasy Grass or the Battle of Little Bighorn or Custer's Last Stand, as many of you may know it. They made sure that I knew the stories of my ancestors that so often many people forget or do not know because those moments that are connected to your life a formative moment, some defining characteristics of your community or your culture. So in my early years before we moved off the reservation, I grew up unselfconscious of myself as a native person, as a Lakota person. However, I also grew up with the acceptance to the fact that I was in a sense bi-religious or bicultural because my family and the majority of our tribe practicing Christians. So Christianity became a part of our life as Lakota people that was not seen as the white man's religion or, or a separation of native tradition, but in fact, quite the fulfillment, an extension. So it fit kind of like a hand in a glove. We were not surprised by what the missionaries told us. In fact, we could tell them much of the same story and perhaps sometimes a little background. So my being Native and Christian isn't an oxymoron. For me, for the way I celebrate our Creator, my spirituality only brings me a deeper understanding of what true interreligious dialogue means. So what does my story have to do with today's reading? One of Jesus' most significant parables regarding work is set in the con context of investments. So Matthew 25, 14 through 30 is about a rich man that delegates the management of his wealth to his servants, right? Much as investors today do in markets. He gives five talents, which is a huge, a large unit of money, heavy, to the first servant, two talents to the second one, and one talent to the third. So two of the servants earn 100% of returns but the third servant hides the money in the ground and earns nothing. So the rich man returns, rewards the two who made the money, but severely punishes the servant who did nothing. So the meaning of the parable extends far beyond financial investments. God has given each person a wide variety of gifts, and God expects us to use those gifts. We are being asked not to put those gifts on a closet shelf or ignore them. Like the three servants, we don't have the same degree of gifts. The return God expects of us is equal, though, with the gifts we have been given. So the servant who received the one talent was not condemned for falling to reach the five talent goal. He was condemned because he did nothing with what he was given. The gifts we receive from God include skills, abilities, family connections, social positions, education experiences, and so much more. The point of the parable is that we are to use whatever we have been given for God's purposes. The severe consequences to the unproductive servant tell us that we are to invest in our lives, not to waste them. So in my Lakota traditions, we make these investments from the moment a child is born. We create a community that cultivates the gifts given to us from our Creator. The most important action that helps us use our gifts is our kinship. So fast forward a few years from my story. I was talking to my great uncle again, and I always reached out when I was struggling with something. Their presence for me was my comfort. And when they shared their wisdom with me, there was no place I would rather be. So my uncle Harvey said to me one day, Toksha, which meant grandchild. He said, someday the world is going to be in trouble and people are going to forget their wisdom. And it's going to take people's voices, elders' voices from the past and the present to begin to call the world back into balance. I see you going really far away and it's going to sometimes be a lonely road and we will not always be there, but you will look into the eyes of seeming strangers and you will recognize your Matakiapi, your family, 
And it will take all of you. It will take all of you to bring the healing ways that we have given to you, that we have taught you. It will take all of you to find that strength. But you will. Do not worry. These words I have held onto all my life. The idea of doing anything alone absolutely terrifies me. But what he wanted me to know was that the kinship that I knew closer to home can also be found wherever I am. And it is through those relationships that I will find the strength to teach and to heal the world around me with the gifts that I have been given. So through the guidance of my parents, my elders, I've chosen to use the gifts my creator has given me in a unique way. Just as I was taught, my gift is like a spiritual teacher whose job is to make people think. To not hide my gift away, but to share my gifts and grow them. And in turn, fully invest in my community just as they had done with me. So when we begin to invest in our community, to treat each other as kin, that investment grows just as our creator God intended. The parable ends with the talent taken from the third servant being given to the one with ten talents. What it tells us is that equal worth does not necessarily mean equal compensation. Each gift we have asks for a different skill or ability, and in return, we are compensated accordingly. But the two servants who did well are rewarded in different amounts, but they are both praised identically. The volunteer who teaches Sunday school is fulfilling this parable just as much as the healthcare worker helping to heal the sick, especially during this time of the pandemic. Our creator does not bestow people with identical or necessarily equal gifts, but how we cultivate the gifts we were given by God and use them will tell us which servant we are in the story. It is not only the gifts that are important to cultivate, but the kinship of the world around us is also a part of the larger investment that God has made in us and for us. So I shared my story with you today because I wanted you to take a unique look at today's reading from a Native perspective. The way I was raised, the way I live my life, I've learned to listen to God's call and I've acted just as my elders did. All of what I have talked about speaks to a foundational Lakota value, the need to enter into the we rather than the I. Listen to God's call and act together, not let things stay away or stay the way they are and hide away. Invest in the whole of your community, not just parts of it, so that you can help cultivate and grow your gifts and others. From the spiritual perspective, this shows the interrelatedness of all things, the kinship of humanity and the sacredness of each person and the gifts that we bring are vital, are a vital part of the whole. These things are the foundational values of God's original covenant. Traditional Native America is built on the we, not the I. We are a part of God's people. We are inseparable from our family, our clan, our nation. So as we listen and reflect on today's reading, perhaps we should begin with the end in mind. Do you want to hide your gifts away or act and use your gifts as an ever giving investment to God's creation, your community? We are called to witness and to act, to continue to grow in kinship with the community around us without question, without judgment. Just be in acceptance and welcome wholeheartedly. Walk in the we and not the I. Our readings today show the important example of what our Christian community is truly supposed to be. It is about the we and not the I. It is up to us to act and model the faith that shows God's way. We are called to follow Jesus boldly, courageously, 
and above all, lovingly in all we do. So Northwest Intermountain Synod, don't just sit back and hide your gifts. Don't let the world make you weary. As my Uncle Harvey said, someday the world will be in trouble. People will forget their wisdom they were taught. It will take voices from the past and from the present to call the world into balance again. It will sometimes be a lonely road, but you will look into the eyes of the strangers around you and you will recognize the Mentakiwapi, your family in them. And it is going to take all of you. It will take all of you to bring the healing ways that have given you through your gifts. It will take all of you to find that strength. But you will, so don't worry. How you choose to show your love towards God, towards people, towards the world around you is your choice just as the servants and the story had the choice. But if there is anything you hear today, let it be this. You are not alone. So go. Act. You have God-given gifts that can change the world and create healing. Amen. We will now sing our hymn of the day, ELW 707, Lord of glory, you have brought us.
with the whole Christian church on earth, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. God of the church, ignite your people with the passion of your love. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us across ministries, congregations, and denominations and reform us to participate in your activity throughout the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of creation, we stand in awe at the works of your hands and praise you for the beauty of nature, for the Columbia River Valley, for the Wenatchee River, for the Cascade Mountains, for fruit trees, sagebrush, and farmland. Guide us to practice repentance for the ways we have exploited stolen land. Guide us to listen to the voices calling us to care for the environment and give back what we have taken and give back to the earth so that our planet may experience renewal. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of the nations, sound forth your justice to all people. Increase our concern for those who are most vulnerable and guide international leaders to end human rights abuses and create a cooperative world. Let us be led by the example of Martin of Tours, who was moved by Christ's message to a life of compassion, was imprisoned to, for refusing to serve in the oppressive military of the Roman Empire, and who gave of his resources to those in greatest need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all in need, search out all who cry to you in distress. Come and be with us and help us endure the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment, and loneliness. Be the comfort that cares for us and the challenge that impels us to live into each new day. And when things are at their worst, send us encouragements and signs of your healing. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all the saints at rest from, the, or from their labors. We ask that you send care to the family of Walter Brooks as they grieve his passing. In turn, we give you thanks as you work to sustain the life of the living. We pray especially for Candy Davison as she works to recover from her sickness. Send her your presence so that she may hold on to hope and guide us to extend care as we can. Be with all who struggle with illness and guide the actions of their caretakers to restore them to health. Bless all who suffer from or work to help people recover from the COVID-19 virus. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of the stranger, stir up holy restlessness in us to extend love to those at the margins. 
release our desire for control and open us to learn from the perspectives of others. May we find inspiration in Soren Kierkegaard, who rejected simplistic Christianity and called for us to courageously place our trust in Jesus Christ so that we may radically love all of our neighbors as ourselves, as God has freed us to do. May we confound the world with Jesus' love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all and also with you. Please take this time to share God's peace with one another, both those around you and those distant from you, anyone who needs Christ's peace this morning. And just one announcement today, uh, we are about to enter into the season of Advent, not this not next Sunday, but the one following from that, November 29th. And Advent is a special time of the church year. It's actually the beginning of the new church year. And it's the time where we prepare ourselves for Christ's arrival at Christmas. Now, we're still going to be worshiping online. We're still going to be distant, and that's really hard this time of the year. So to help us feel closer to one another, we are preparing some Advent kits. Uh, to be distributed uh, to different households. These kits contain uh, some tea light candles, some votives, uh, votive holders, and then some um, uh, tissue paper to decorate the candle holders, as well as some supplies to make a small angel, and then a devotion series uh, as well, prepared by um, the staff at Grace Lutheran. Uh, and this is really just to help you feel a bit more connected and grounded in the Advent season. Uh, it should hopefully be a way to just f help you feel a bit more connected to your Grace community, even though we tragically have to be apart right now. So we're doing a pickup uh, for these kits next Sunday, so that's the 22nd of November. Um, and if you would like to request one of these kits, uh, please email Beth Smallbeck at youthandfamily at glcwen.org. It should be placed right beneath me there. Um, or you can just call the church as well, ask for a kit, and we'll be sure to have prepared one for you. And we'll give you more details about when you can pick that up. And then also, if you have not, if you did not receive a, an ELW hymnal, that's the red hymnal that we use for a lot of our music at church, um, at the beginning of this pandemic, we invite you to do so now. Uh, please just request one and we'll have one ready for you to receive on the 22nd as well. We just wanna make sure that everyone has this music and is able to join us in singing. So now please continue to share the piece as we hear our offering song.
Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, so that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and then he gave it for them all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We will now sing our hymn of the day, ELW 826, Thine the Amen. <laughs>
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.